Welcome to Week 9 Boom Bus Fantasy Football Show brought to you by Fantasy Football Network and Sellout Crowd. I'm Corey and I'm joined by my brother Kyle. We're going to break down some booms and busts in each position for you for Week 9 Fantasy Football Matchups. Let's break it down for him, Kyle, and try to lead everyone to victory this week. What do you got for us we, first? I hope, I hope we can help lead everybody to victory this week. Uh, let's start out with our boom quarterback, Mr. Dak Prescott. So coming out of the bye last week, Thought he'd have a little bit of a rough game. Had him as my bust. Not making that mistake again this week. Going with him as my boom against Philly. The way you beat Philly is through the air. And I, I, Sam Howell just put up 30-some fantasy points on him last week. Dak yeah. Prescott can come out and do at least as good as that. They're 25th against fantasy quarterbacks. Uh, the Dallas offense also come out looking a lot more dynamic after the bye versus the Rams than they had before where they were just pounding the football up the middle when it wasn't working still. So it's nice to see maybe they worked on some stuff during that bye week. And uh, as long as this offense is rolling in the passing game, I'm going to stick with with Dak here against Philly. Yeah, it does seem that Dallas offense is starting to hit its stride a little bit. Been struggling and finally kind of hitting that stride. And and you said it best. You're not going to beat Philly on the ground. you got to go through the air. And Washington just lit them up. And Dallas has a much better passing game than Washington does. So give me Dak Prescott. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Fool me once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, who's your bust? So my bust QB of the week is Mr. Geno Smith. Uh, playing against Baltimore. Baltimore has actually allowed the fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks in the league so far this season. Um, Statistically, that sounds mean, you know, but like when you look at who they've played so far, they had, you know, they haven't played some of the best quarterbacks, Carolina, the Giants, Arizona, Cleveland, right? But like they just shut down. Jared Goff in week seven, Mm -hmm. which was probably the best QB they've played so far this year. And I think they can absolutely do the exact same thing to Geno Smith. Um, Geno had a really good game, really good season last year. I think we had higher hopes for him this year. He doesn't look quite as good throwing the ball. He's not quite as dynamic this year, not putting up the points in bunches. So I I think he struggled against uh, Baltimore this week. I was about to mention the same thing that Geno Smith last year uh, had a really good season and it was kind of coming into this season. Uh, was he just kind of playing above his level, a little out of his mind? Could he repeat it? Um, I think we're seeing that he was playing a little out of his league last year. and But also this year, they're able to lean on that run a little bit more. Uh, yeah. They've got Kenneth Walker, Stan Healthy, Charbonnet uh, in that backfield as well. So this offense is running the ball more. Plus, right now, you've got DK Metcalf struggling with some injuries. Uh, it's just not boding well for this. And like you said, the the matchup with Baltimore in Baltimore, yeah, in Baltimore. I'm, just, I'm just not liking it very much. Yeah, me either. <laughs> All right, let's move on to running backs. All right, our boom running back of the week is Jerome Ford versus Arizona. He's coming back. He's going to be another week healthier from that injury. They let him play last week. But because he wasn't still quite 100%, they had a little bit of a three-headed monster there, right? They had him, they had Kareem Hunt, and then they had Pierre Strong all getting a piece of the pie. This week, he's coming back a little bit healthier. I think he starts getting a bigger piece of that pie. Deshaun Watson's still not back. They're going to be leaning on that run again. And you can run on Arizona. They're towards the bottom of the league versus running backs. Um, So I think a bigger piece of the pie versus this kind of defense i think it's just a recipe for fantasy success well i also want to factor in the the quarterback play for arizona right they're going to have what what was like a third string quarterback right because they just shipped Dobbs off so my guess is cleveland is going to get a big lead in this game which means run the ball run the ball run the ball which is what they're best at anyways yeah so they're just going to run the ball. So even if it's a three-headed monster again, 
everyone's going to get so many touches that it doesn't really matter. But I think if you're bringing Jerome Ford back, trying to get him back into the groove, Arizona's the team to do it against, and I think they take advantage of that. And, again, nursing a lead, I think Jerome Ford gets a lot more touches this week. Yep, absolutely. I think I think Pierre Strong would be the one whose piece of the pie shrinks as yep. a result. Agreed. All righty, who's your bust? So our, so our bust running back of the week, Mr. Tony Pollard. I hate to do this to him because he's coming off of an already rough game last week. Um, but Philly, we talked about it when we talked about Dak, they're not a team you can beat on the ground. You're going to have – you're going to struggle on the ground versus Philly. Way to beat them is through the air. Um, so, I, I really – I mean, they're top five in the league against running backs. So, as much as I love Tony Pollard in general, this week, not a big fan. Um, of course, you're still – it's hard to sit him, especially you've got a few bye weeks this week and stuff. But I would expect closer to what we saw last week out of him versus – you know, going forward, I think he has the potential for some much, much larger games through the end of the season. Yeah, I think the only way uh, Pollard has any sort of productive fantasy day is if they throw him the ball. Yeah. Right. Uh, last week, he saw a little bit of success through the air with Antonio Gibson getting uh, five targets, five catches. So he got uh, some fantasy points there. Uh, but they had a hard time getting getting the the running game going washington did again beating them through the air so going back to dak prescott having the game and it's not because tony pollard isn't great it's just because of game flow uh and strategy and just the opponent that is just what this comes down to so as hard as it is to say tony pollard is a bust it's just what it's looking like that's the forecast yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I'm going to take a break really quick and talk about Fantasy Football Advice Network. Go to fantasyfootballadvice.com and you can join for free the only social media network dedicated 100% to fantasy football. You can ask questions, answer questions, build a community, and help one another with all of your fantasy football questions to help win your week. 100% free. So go join and have a good time. All righty, guys, let's move on to wide receivers. Kyle, who's your wide receiver boom of week nine? My wide receiver boom, Mr. Rashi Rice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kansas City Chiefs playing against Miami. Miami is 11th highest points allowed to wide receivers, to slot wide receivers. Mahomes is not sick this week, and Rashi Rice has been the most consistent receiver on that team behind, of course, Travis Kelsey, the GOAT. But this guy's role continues to increase every week. You see that chemistry and that trust building between him and Mahomes. And I think we finally have found that number one receiver for Mahomes that we've needed from that group of guys. We knew eventually one of them would separate. I think a lot of people expected it to be Kadarius Toney. Going into the season, there was a lot of hype on Sky Moore. Rashi Rice has turned out to be that guy. He's playing very, very well. And I think after a rough game last week for the Chiefs, I think they're going to want to come back and really prove a point against Miami this week. I mean, that was a brutal loss last week with Mahomes sick to the rival Broncos, right, who have been a horrible team this year. Yep. So this week they go to Germany. They play Miami. I think it's going to be a shootout. I think it's going to be a – Really fun, high-scoring game. Um, I love love Rasheed Rice in this matchup. I mean, I can't add much more to that. I think I agree. I think they're going to go to Germany and try to put on a show. I mean, that's going to be a fun, fun game. Uh, I'm actually going to wake up and watch that one. It's the first London game I'm actually interested in waking up that early for. Yeah. Um, and But Rice, like you said, he's finally kind of becoming that number one wide receiver that everyone's kind of wanted to emerge in Kansas city. Um, and he, al he also gets some red zone looks, which makes him valuable too, mm -hmm. you know? So like that for him as well. Yeah. All righty. Who is your bus wide receiver? So our bus receiver of the week, Mr. Hollywood Brown. Ouch. I, uh, yeah, I, I know. I love Hollywood, but this week with a new QB and Clayton tune, after Josh Dobbs was shipped off to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, 
not to mention just the matchup against Cleveland. They've been shutting down receivers and quarterbacks all year. I don't think Clayton Toon is the one that comes in and changes that. So I'm really expecting a rough day out for that whole offense. Yeah, I agree. And they're playing in Cleveland. So yes. it's just, you know, yeah. just stack something else on top of that. I'm you're going it, from the desert to the cold. Like it's they're going from the desert to the cold. That's gonna be tough. Yep, with with Clayton Toon and Ooh, it's just gonna be bad. I just I just don't like it. That Cleveland defense has been so stingy this year, all the way around. They've surprised everybody and just mm-hmm. been so stingy. So um I'm not I'm not liking that at all. Uh Marquise Brown may be able to find some success if they get gadgety with him, but that's the only way I can see that. Yeah. I, I don't know if they try to pull that out though. So no, I mean, even if Kyler did make it back this week, I think that's a rough matchup for them either way. Yeah, that's why I'm not confident Kyler's coming back this week because I don't think they would. Yeah, I think they've already week. said he won't be back this week. I think we'll see him. It'll be next week or the week after still. But Yeah, I think I think they're just kind of throwing in the towel on this week and just being like, eh, we'll take yeah. one. We'll take an L this week and then just recover yeah. uh, against Atlanta in week 10. Exactly. We'll just take this one on the chin and better luck next week. Exactly. <laughs> All righty, let's move on to tight ends then. Who is your boom tight end of the week? My boom tight end of the week, Mr. Dallas Goddard. Now, first I want to address, this is my third player from this game, but I feel like it's the three guys that might have some question marks going into this game. Um, and, and let me assure you, Goddard is going to have a good game because I think not only is Dallas 20th against tight ends in fantasy points this year, but we're bought like bottom six in the league versus slot wide receivers allowing points. And I think Goddard plays in a slot a lot this weekend against us to take advantage of that. Could probably lead the league in targets or lead the team in targets this week against Dallas for that very reason. Like that's a huge mismatch, mismatch for them. Dallas has already been beaten up by tight ends this year. I mean, look a few weeks ago what George Kittle did to us. Mm, so, right. <laughs> yeah, so I I really think uh, Goddard's in for a pretty big day. I have nothing positive. As a Dallas fan, that. unfortunately. I, think I have nothing positive to say about a Phillies player, so I'm ready to move on. <laughs> well, then moving on, my bus tied <laughs> into the week, Mr. Cole Komet. Um, You know, the – Badgett that came in and he's playing QB for Fields while he's hurt. Puts up a zero burger in week seven. Comes out last week. Nobody's expecting anything. And he's like the feature receiver on the team. Puts up 18 PPR points. Just going crazy. Um, Unfortunately, this week, you're not going to see a repeat. They're playing New Orleans top five uh, in the league versus uh, tight ends. Like, he's not going to have a very easy time. Um not only against tight ends, but they're also six versus slot receivers. So whether wherever he's at in the formation, he's going to have a hard time against this New Orleans defense. Um, so I, I would try to find another option. I don't think Cole Komet was drafted as a starter by anyone probably. So you have another option on your team. Just go with them, whoever it is. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, he, he had 10, he was 10 for 10 last week, 10 targets, 10 receptions no touchdown uh, this week it to score any sort of points. It's going to be a touchdown dependency. Yep. Uh, he's not going to get 10 catches against new Orleans. They're too stingy for that. Yeah. So uh, I don't see that happening. And I honestly don't see him getting a touchdown. So no. uh, I, I am going somewhere else this week. That new Orleans defense is no joke against tight ends. So, yeah. And, and this QB is not the one to be, to just bust that open. This isn't the guy who's just going to come in and be like, hey, I could do better than everyone else. Yeah, that's not going to happen. So No, no they're they're going to struggle this week against the Saints. Yeah, I agree. All righty. So that do, does it for all the booms and busts now. Let's go on to a couple streamers here. Uh, let's talk about your streamer kicker first. Yeah, streamer kicker, Mr. Matt Gay for uh, Indianapolis. You know, he's been – Quietly, very, very consistent, very solid kicker this year. Um, but playing Carolina this week, 
that team is capable of putting up plenty of points on Carolina. So I think he's going to have plenty of opportunities to to put up points himself. So if he's available and he's a, he's actually available in quite a few leagues that I'm in still. So like if he's available and you need a kicker, go grab him up. Well, like you said, availability, uh, according to Sleeper right now, he's only rostered in 43% of leagues. So in over half leagues, he's still available. That's and criminal. He's, like he's, he's playing number six well. kicker on the season right now. So yes. he's been consistent all season. Granted, he had that one game, 24 points, that kind of sets him up above. But for most games, he's scoring double-digit points. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, playing at Carolina, you're going to have so many scoring opportunities. You're going to be down in scoring position often. So even you're, you just want opportunities for a kicker in scoring position. That's what you want. So, yep. yeah, I'm, I'm rolling with that. All righty, let's move on to your streamer defense of the week. Yeah, my streamer defense of the week, um, the Las Vegas Raiders. It's kind of an interesting pick. I so, would agree. So when I picked this team, I had decided to use them before Josh McDaniel got fired. And I know it's going to be weird, you know, them not having their coach and some things have changed or whatever. But I'm sticking with them for this reason. They're playing the New York Giants. <laughs> New York Giants. So even if Daniel Jones is back this week, and there's really no guarantee yet that he will be, um, he has thrown or he has taken 28 sacks and thrown six interceptions in the five starts that he's had. That's crazy That's already. But then Tyrod Taylor got hurt and he's missed. So if they don't get Daniel Jones, they got I couldn't even tell you the third stringer's name off the top of my head. I think it's Tommy DeVito. There you go. That guy's not gonna get it done. So there's a reason why I didn't put the whole team on this slide and why I put Max Crosby on this slide alone is because I think he is going to destroy whoever is playing quarterback for the Giants on Sunday. And <laughs> just I think he has multiple sacks, all the QB rush like hurries and you know I I just I think he's going to absolutely wreck shop this weekend against the New York Giants offensive line and quarterback and that's going to make it really difficult for them to put up points, which is something else you like. It's going to make them rush into throws, which is turnovers, maybe get a strip sack and a fumble here, that whatever. I see a lot of points, and I think most of it is a result of Max Crosby. Well, it, it looks like Daniel Jones is probably going to play. He's trending that way. The problem is we don't know who he's going to throw the ball to because Darren Waller, is out with a hamstring injury, and that's yep. obviously the best receiving option he had. So you've got a bunch of lower-tier wide receivers. You have Saquon Barkley, um, but your offensive line is also terrible. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Crosby's going to have a fun day. Yeah. And uh, the best shot that the Giants have at moving the ball is just maybe taking advantage of uh, an eager – Raiders defensive line and trying to throw some screen passes to Barkley, but that's really the only thing they have going for them. That's, um, yeah, that's about the only thing. And after a few of those, who's to say they don't catch on and start defending that? You know, like, I yeah. don't know. I just don't see it going well for the Giants as we Faith weekend. is shaken for the Giants there. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree that Vegas, uh, and, and you know, I mean, the Vegas uh, defense put up 14 points against Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, they're I mean, playing really well. I mean, Max Crosby is one of the premier pass rushers in this league. So, yeah. you know, they're they're going to have good games. And, man, this is one of the matchups they can exploit for sure. I agree. All righty, guys. That does it for our booms, busts, and streamers of the week. One more time, just want to invite you over to fantasyfootballadvice.com. Join the Fantasy Football Advice Network. It's free. Sign up, build a community, and ask questions and answer questions, uh, read articles, view videos, listen to podcasts, all kinds of good stuff over there. Free to sign up. That's fantasyfootballadvice.com. Go join the community and have some fun and win your week. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. 
Thanks for joining us for Booms and Busts, and good luck in your Week 9 matchups. Good luck, guys. Thanks.